a bunch of people. I work with a bunch of people, associate with a bunch of people. If I were to, you know, tell them what I really believe, it it'd be a scene like out of Inherit the Wind or something. <laughs> I was I was wondering um, what sort of uh, groups we have in Knoxville as far as. Would you like to tell them about RET and I'll talk about ASK? Yeah, there, there is the, uh, the rationalist of East Tennessee uh, has people from various walks of life, whether you're an agnostic, an atheist, or a theist, RET. And, and they come together to, to discuss various uh, issues and problems. And you have the, another group. I'm, I'm the leader, I guess, or the president of the a Atheist Society of Knoxville. We have over 235 members right now. It's been going since 2002. Um, the RET is more or less a, a structured environment where they have speakers come in and have social engagements and, and usually get together Sunday mornings uh, for, for talks and conversation. Uh, however, the Atheist Society of Knoxville is basically just for camaraderie. We get together, usually do one happy hour a week somewhere in Knoxville, and we'd be happy to have you um, come join us. Okay. Um, I, I can't really see your all's uh, website. You're <laughs> hiding it. I was... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Rationalist.org uh, and Knoxville Atheist. Okay. I think I'm in the way. Yeah. <laughs> kind of All righty. Okay. Uh, well, I'll look you up online, and thank you much. I enjoyed the okay. show. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, every group Go needs ahead. to be off there. Yeah, every group needs to feel as if they have a support. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, so and, true. The, and the atheists have, uh, have that need as, as well as Methodists or Hindus or whatever. And there's so many people out there, free thinkers, atheists, agnostics, uh -huh. who don't have that support right now. And that's the, one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that I started my group. Getting back to the Bible, we were talking about it was a multiple choice because you could basically find anything that you want to in there that supports what you believe and say, the Bible says it. Uh, it doesn't ma really matter what you believe so much. Even slavery, you could point to the Bible and say, the Bible says it, it must be true, which is what the pre, or even during the Civil War preachers used to do. They'd oh, hold yeah, up the yeah, Bible yeah. and say, this is my support for slavery. God, you God know, ordains if we it. Should, if we should read the Bible, the way we read Shakespeare, mm -hmm. uh, Shakespeare has incredible insights. Uh, it also has beauty, beauty of language mm -hmm. and poetry, yeah. high drama, and you, you can find the, in the Bible also beautiful, mm -hmm. and you can you find can, great can. insight in the Bible. Not only that, but if we read it like we do Homer, we would have incredible insight into the period of time that they period lived of time. Exactly. and the psychological uh, set of the, the thinking man at the time. Yeah, as, 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 as a historian would. Mm -hmm. Right. Just Another thing about the Bible is, as opposed to being a multiple choice, I've often thought of it as a Rorschach ch test. Uh -huh. Because if, if you're like a homophobe and you're really against the homosexual community, open up the Bible, there it is. This is what you will take from the Bible instead of uh, love your neighbor. Um, Honor your parents. Uh, it is uh, as if you, you read yourself into the right. You read, uh, you take the things out of it. It, it becomes that a you recognize that you would want to support and say this is what yeah. what God wants. And yeah. Unfortunately, I, I think that, that you, you have a real good point there. Is people sometimes get from the Bible what they put into mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. And if you've got somebody who is a really strong Bible believer. Listen to what they're saying about what's in the Bible. That will tell you more about them than it will about the Bible. Because you can support anything from the Bible. I, I think reading the Apostle Paul is a very rewarding experience because you can see a great mind at work trying to mm -hmm. solve a problem. And one of the big problems was he was living in the Roman Empire trying to make some room for the Gentiles. Mm. And this was a, I think he was, I think he was suffering because he realized the vast majority of people were of another ethnic background. And mm. so he was trying to expand his religion to incorporate mm. more people. Mm -hmm. Now, you can identify with this, you would have to say this is a more liberal attitude. Now, all of us are liberals and conservatives. Mm -hmm. To some extent. Dis dis mm -hmm. Despite all of these TV polemics And parties. Mm -hmm. most, TV parties. Most people like to conserve what they think is of value, and mm -hmm. they like to be liberal in terms of sharing it with other right. people. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and I find the Apostle Paul, even where I differ with him on some major points, nevertheless, as a humanist, I find a fellow human there. And I can mm-hmm. learn and see how he he tried to solve right. his problem. Maybe that will help me solve some right. of my problems. He was certainly not a two-dimensional character. Not, in that that's thing. a good way to put yeah. it. He's not a stick yeah, figure. He had a lot of depth to him. Uh-huh. Another thing about um, ethics, uh, if you believe in the Bible and believe in supernatural beings, Uh uh, you also believe in devils and demons who can trick you into doing things that are against uh, your ethical beliefs. And how are we, if this is true, how are we supposed to stand against something like that? If if who well, was it? I used to be on TV. Said the devil made the devil made me do it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a comedian. Then. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. One of the problems with the devil theory is it, it simply keeps postponing. Mm-hmm. And you, then you got to raise the question: Well, who tempted the devil? Mm-hmm. And then, well, another devil. And a, I mean, you mm-hmm. still and say who the, created the devil and who created yeah. his personality? And, and, and we have to say the buck stops yeah. here. The buck stops here with We're humanity. We're responsible. We are responsible yeah. for our actions, and that's why we don't look for some invisible being to put in jail when somebody breaks the law. We right, put the right. person in jail because we hold them accountable for their actions. As a matter of fact, if you thought there was, is, is, that, a, is that a phone? Not yet. Uh, he's got to answer it clearly. If you thought there were a Satan, a Lucifer, you would ask why, he's, why has he not been incarcerated mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and put in bars, yeah. mm-hmm. behind bars right. earlier. Right. Uh, uh, and I'm, he's not omnipotent. Only one person is omnipotent according to uh, the scriptures and but believers. We've got a, okay. I believe we, we have a, a caller come in. we got a phone call. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, would you? Welcome to Free Thought Forum. Hello. Hello. Hey, go ahead. Let's hear what you have to say, would you? Uh, yes, this is Mike. Uh-huh. Um, I am uh, interested in what uh, you might have to say about the origins or the origin of religion, uh, I have a, a feeling without any specific uh, academic knowledge that it may lie, at least in part, in a prehistoric mind uh, associated with, uh, I guess, reaction and fear to natural phenomena. Right. In other yeah, words, no. say the uh, Neanderthal looking out and seeing lightning and fearing it and it coming from above and somehow feeling that he must give homage or do something to lessen well, the threat. I would it's say that's a, that's a big... Uh, processes and... Yeah. and uh, I would say that's a big, that big part of it. may have led you... to uh, religious uh, uh, kinds of, uh, of uh, uh-huh, thought uh-huh. processes. processes. I, I don't... But the other part of it is somebody else standing there being willing to take advantage of his his problem and tell him the answer, be, uh, assuming to say what he knows what the answer is. Uh, oh, that lightning, that's, that's, uh, that's Thor. You know, he's God who wants you to do uh, certain, certain things to appease him. We better do that or we'll, we'll get more storm and lightning. Yeah, mo- most of the species has been highly anthropomorphic. Uh, children are. That is, they, in, they interpret n- nature in personal terms. And, and this may be one source of religion. Religions are very complex things, so there's no one explanation. In fact, there's one book with a hundred definitions of religion. So I don't think I'm going <laughs> to be able to saw, answer your question too well. Yeah, well, do you have a, a, a source that would be... Uh, uh, interesting and informative uh, on the subject? Uh, yeah, uh, I can give you a, a book by a guy named Barnhart <laughs> called Religion and the Challenge of Philosophy, mm-hmm. and, and that might be of useful, or E.S. Brightman, B-R-I-G-H-T-M-A-N, called A Philosophy of Religion. is a very good book, I think. Okay, yeah, and, Barnhart and Brightman. And, and Brightman is the other. Brightman, mm-hmm. right. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. Pleasure. Good, good question. Yo, uh, I think we might have another caller. Mm. Uh, oh, that's all. Okay. Uh, th- these, this was a very good question. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, imagine uh, in antiquity people having dreams 
and their father or their mother or a brother comes right. in the dream and they may be prone to believe the brother actually came back or right. the father. They're talking about your dead relatives coming mm -hmm. to visit you in the dream. Yeah. yeah. And then you wake up and you look around and they're not there anymore and everybody tells you they're still dead. Yeah. You know, that, that, that raises some massive questions in your own mind. But I don't think religion began wholly in fear because some parts of religion seem to be designed to relieve fear mm -hmm. and to give answer questions. Yeah. Uh, and and, and that's a good point, mm -hmm. is we cannot help trying to invent answers. Right. And religion has a tradition of no, trying to questions. do this. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and the best criticism of religion is another religion. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, think of the hundreds of religions that are out there, all offering different questions. I mean, I'm sorry, different answers to the same questions. Mm -hmm. They can't all be right, but they can all be wrong. Uh, the scientific method is the best method that humanity has come up to come up with to date uh, to answer these questions. Uh, science may have it wrong today, but they get closer and closer and closer to the answer with every passing year. In fact, uh, you could, there, there are, um, I just read an article by a, um, a woman who's a Baptist arguing for evolution. Mm -hmm. And she is trying to put together her version of God or theism and a Darwinian and, and other evolutionists after Darwin together to have a rational theism. And you can see a very right. intelligent mind mm -hmm. trying to work. Trying to work out the, the problems that keep them apart. Yeah. Um, that's going on in many, many churches today all across the world. Uh, we know that certain answers uh, are real because we build technologies on them. Uh, they work in a day-to-day -day environment. But then when we come up against a religion that says it's supposed to be some other way, then we have to reconcile those. And uh, religions, I think, are taking the brunt of that damage. As, as a matter of fact, in science, there develops a principle of falsification. Mm -hmm. Right. In science, if you're going to be a scientist, you have to write your, your equations, your theories, clear enough so that you and your colleagues can find the flaws. And mm -hmm. in that sense, right. it's like building an automobile. Mm -hmm. You build a theory, and you try to find the flaws in it. Mm -hmm. And the same as you build a car and you test it right. because you don't want to put it on the market. Mm -hmm. And science then is like that. And I, I think you can look, I think you can make a study of the history of theology mm -hmm. and see the attempts to try to correct, mm -hmm. the same as in right. science, to try to improve and correct it. Right. And religion is exactly not like that because they generally don't want you to, to give you anything that you can test. Uh, I mean, right in the in the Bible, it tells you that uh, two people praying together can move mountains. Or if you have the grain of salt, I mean, a, a grain of mustard seed faith of, of faith. mustard seed. Yeah. Yes, but uh, we've never seen a mountain move. And there's a lot of people with faith. It's almost like why isn't anybody praying for world peace or getting rid of cancer? We still have those. Certainly, there aren't people praying against it. Yeah, that's one of the problems when you pray and don't get mm -hmm. the answer. You have to keep a record of that if you're going to be <laughs> systematic yeah. of it. And, of course, the mountain is, uh, is uh, uh, in some cases, you have to have it as a figure of speech. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to move well, the Smoky Mountains. Mm -hmm. Right. But how much of the Bible is figure of speech well, and how much is not? Yeah, that's a good and we're, that's... we're coming up to a few seconds. Now. Okay, go ahead. Um, after the program, you can call the station at 215-8848 to purchase DVDs of this and past Free Thought Forum programs. Uh, I'm Larry Rhodes. And I'm Joe Barnhart. Uh, Thank we, you for being with us. We still have 30 seconds. So we can't take a phone call that quickly. I guess we could try. Hit it. Let's, see. Let's go. Hello? Oh, it's too late. So they did try, though. I have to give them that. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you for try, tuning try in. Next time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll join us next week on Free uh -huh. Thought Forum. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.